Today's video features four deadly wet flies. These are some of the top searching patterns from English anglers. The black Zulu has been so deadly on trout that it was once banned in competitions in England. This version is tied with black peacock eye stub body and peacock sword collar. Here is another version of the black Zulu that Brent will tie for you today. We will be tying on a Daichi 1530 size 8 hook. Black 6 aught tying thread. Small silver oval rib. Red golden pheasant tippets for the tail. Webby black saddle hackle. Blue peacock breast feather. Green peacock hurl body. Okay, folks, uh, today on the bench, the uh, black Zulu is our next target. Uh, great searching pattern. It's been uh, sought after in England for many, many years. It was actually banned from uh, competition fishing like the Alexandra. This one here I've uh, substituted. I've used the peacock sword uh, around the collar on this one. Gives some really nice shine. Uh, uh, such a great material. That one I used on a uh, fly called a Guarantee. Uh, a fellow showed me in many years ago. Very good fly. Iridescence is the answer here. So uh, this one here, of course, got the uh, a different body. I've used the Ice Tub Peacock Black on this one. It's a nice color. There's nothing wrong. That fly's going to fish just plumb fine. I've substituted the red wool for the tail, and I've used the uh, red uh, pheasant tippets. So let's go with the bench and uh, get a hook in the vise here. We're going to uh, tie this one up the original style. And... Just give you an idea of the variations, but iridescence in these flies is so critical. I can see why these these fish really tune into them. So let's go. With, I'm not going to use any of the red wool. I'll come in here again with another one of these red tippets, pheasant tippets here. And the nice markings. That's always a rich looking tailing material. I want a little more on there. Make sure you line them up nice. So the bars, they got those bars marked on there. Turn this on a really nice, strong wet fly hook. There's a lot of anglers that don't fish wet flies and you're missing out. I had a pleasure to fish with quite a few English uh, fly fishers when I was in Madison Hat. At the shop there in my guiding, I had fellows that were in the military base there just outside of the Medicine Hat and from England and fished, got to fish with a few of them. And I'll tell you, you can learn a lot from them guys. They've been fishing, they got a lot of history in there about their fishing clubs and so forth. And they pass on a lot of their, they keep a lot of their secrets pretty close to their hearts. So you got to watch them a little bit. They won't just, oh no, tell you sometimes. <laughs> But they're uh, definitely good anglers. Okay, so we've got uh, the tails and the uh, tinsel tied in. I'm using the uh, oval on there instead of the flat mylar. Just a beautiful looking material. I like to use that. And then uh, instead of the black wool body, I'm using bright green peacock curl. Now this again, when it gets wet, it'll change colors. I'm going to make sure I get some of the short ones out of there. This is dyed, and the iridescence again on peacock curl is just one of my favorite all-time uh, materials. I'm just going to go forward with that. I'm not going to create a rope here because we'll be reinforcing this all with that oval. Gives a nice, very nice look to it. Throw a half hitch in here. Then uh, for the hackle. Uh, black hackle, of course. Now here's a super saddle here, a really nice super saddle. Now if you look in the back of these saddles, look at the iridescence. You can see that on there, that greenish hue coming off that. That's the hackle I'm selecting off the back. That is just perfect for this fly. So I'm going to tie that, catch that in here to 45. Get that off. And we're going to the thread post, get this out of the way, and then I'll just go back here with about four or five turns. It's just about right there. I'm going to bring my oval in over top, 
forward, reinforce it, make sure I don't drop too much of that hackle down, get my oval tied off, clip off my hackle at the rear, I'm going to preen these back a little bit too, lean them back, you can, like that, just looks better, it's a very, very suggestive pattern. Okay. Now the uh, secret sauce for this one is the peacock blue breast feather off the peacock and you can buy them. They're just little packs. They're very inexpensive. They're just uh, and uh, I've used these feathers before like say on a fly called the guarantee. A gentleman fished with me one day out of Calgary and he brought, brought a fly called the guarantee and I've tied it since. Uh, I've really had a lot of good luck with it but Boy, this uh, blue feather, brass feather, really looks good. So I'm just going to tie it in by the tip here. Behind the eye. Grab myself a little hackle player. This has really nice characteristics. You just, this blue brass feather, just, it looks so cool on a fly. Now I'll show you a couple other uh, materials you can use on this fly that work as will work also. But when I see like the Alexander, for example, is one that was outlawed as well in competitions over there, and it's got the um, peacock sword in it. The iridescence is really, uh, really the ticket. So. Get that hackle flowing back nicely. Cut that off. Just bring in a little bit of this uh, UV for the head. Finish that up so our fly don't fall apart. You guys haven't fished searching patterns, wet flies like this. You're missing out on a lot of opportunities. Because I'll tell you, when fish get a little bit tough, they're going to... Uh, turn on the flies like this they always work I've fished a lot of searching patterns and I love stripping these flies so there it is the uh, black Zulu and uh, a couple of the alternatives as I was going to say for the uh, collar you could use like say the uh, peacock sword they're very easily to get in any fly shop. You can get those. Also, another iridescent color, really good, is a lot of these dyed uh, pheasant rumps. There's a lot of iridescent in here. These are really cool. I like those too. So you could you could probably go with this fly out. Even try it with a maybe a green green head on it like that as well. But the blue is I've I've used it a lot, and I know that it. <laughs> It works. When I seen the pattern, I knew it was a winner. So I just want to bring it to you and share that one with you folks. So all the best. If you don't have the red tippet material or the tippet feathers, just go with the red yarn. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll catch you back here real soon. Our next fly is the Alexandria, which is another fly that was banned from competitions. The originator is unknown. However, this fly has a great reputation. Here are the materials to tie the fly. Tiemco 3761 size 8 hook. Red hackle fibers. The body is silver mylar tinsel ribbed with small silver wire. The throat is black hackle fibers. The wing is peacock sword. Let's go to the bench to tie this beautiful fly. Well, here's another uh, wet fly from you, for you from England. These. Uh... This fly here, I've tied and fished for years myself, and I know it, how good it works. You always kind of wonder when you read these stories about flies being banned and sound pretty grandiose, but it's it's a fact, I guess. I know it does work very, very well. I know all the rules over there in its time, but I don't uh, fish competitively. But uh, a lot of English wet fly patterns have the red tails 
I like to get a, another little turn in behind my tail just to lock them in nice and tight. That sways a little bit. I like that even more. Just cut these butts off. We get a nice even flat body. That's good. We got this on a size 8. You can go a little smaller with this too. I'd go 10s and 12s with it. 10s being a really good size. I, I had the 8, so, so I like to try a little bigger for my demos anyway. Uh, okay, let's get in here some silver wire. I want some fairly coarse wire here for uh, reinforcement. This pattern can get chewed up. So I want to make sure I protect that. Next, we're going to put some tinsel on here. Uh, mylar. This is size 10. Use a little smaller if you want, but the, I like the little heavier mylar. It's gold on one side and silver on the other. I'm just going to tie gold side up behind the eye. Catch that in. That bounces the light off really good. We run our get a nice smooth body when you run the mylar front to back, back to front. That's a good way to do your any bodies like that. So many of these beautiful flies too. It they just look good hanging on a wall if you just want a hobby to really do something a little more artistic. There's a lot of English patterns out there that are really gorgeous. Then I'll just come in with this. This is really pretty he heavy silver wire, but I'm, I want some strength. I'm going to reverse wrap this forward. And that's uh, going to help that a lot. The mylar will be a little fragile. Cut always on the inside of your scissors so you don't wreck your tying scissors. Or better yet, use some old nippers or uh, side cutters or something. Okay, so let's go on the bottom here. We're going to put a black throat on it. I'm just going to uh, grab some webby hackle in here. I won't pull them off my saddle because I only need a little bit. Let me see where I was. Instead of cutting it all, leaving it lay there. Here it is. Get a nice little chunk of that black throat. I'm going to just hold it up to the side. And then I roll it under. Some guys struggle with putting it on underneath and then getting it on the eye of the hook and so forth. That's a pretty easy way of doing it. And then I'll just take my thread and come to the back and I just roll it under. So it's really nicely splayed. It's coming right to the point, point of the fly right there. Secret sauce here in that peacock sword is just gorgeous uh, coloration and uh, cut. This is a pretty good size fly, so I'm going to cut a nice, generous wing with that. It's got a nice curve curvature to it. We'll utilize all that. Tips don't have to be perfectly straight. They can be tapered a little bit. That's good, but make sure you get the curve down. I'll take a soft turn. Soft turn and pull straight up. And I'm tying that in at the back of the head. Nip that off. Then I just keep my thumb there so I don't go back any further. Nice little guide. My thread comes right off my thumb. And then I'll grab my whip finish. Make sure I got that all the tips, butts tied down, or there's no color coming through there. And we'll just bring in some Solares bone dry. I like to use that for my um, finish on these flies. Makes it look good, but more importantly, it makes it a lot more durable. And there you go, the Alexandra. And that is a fly that. Not only looks good, but it fishes very, very well. Floating line. You can fish this in rivers and streams, and it, it is absolutely one of the best. 
Thanks for watching. We'll catch you again real soon. We're going to tie you up uh, another couple more of these uh, great English patterns that uh, you might want to try in your fly box. We'll take them, take them to your lake this year and uh, rivers, whatever, and see how it all works for you. But you're going to be happily surprised. These, these flies have been around a long time for a reason. This is a familiar fly to many anglers from both sides of the pond. The Dahlbach is a very effective little fly that has been used extensively in lakes and rivers for decades, previously known as the Little Devil. This fly is tied on a TMC 3761 size 10 hook. Brown hackle fibers for the tail and the throat. Arizona synthetic peacock dubbing. The body is wrapped with red holographic flash and silver wire. Well, folks, uh, next fly here is a simplistic little fly that definitely deserves a spot in your fly box. It's a pretty popular pattern. A lot of stillwater anglers, uh, even coming here in Canada, know a lot of them fishing it. It's uh, called the Little Devil originally. It's the Dollback. I'm going to tie this one on a size 10. You can go to 12s and 14s with this one, too. Um, okay, now we're just going to address that shank. I'll come in here with some brown. This I'm just going to use some nice brown uh, neck hackle here. You can use saddle hackle, it doesn't really matter. I'll come in here, strip some off her tail. It's a bit of a furnace type hackle. It's got a little black in the middle, but that's okay. Keep that the butts there, keep it all nice and flat. All right. Now we'll bring in uh, some little bit of our small uh, wire, silver wire here for reinforcement. Oh, I like using my wire and it's a good place for it. Keep it all nice and strong. Okay. Then I'll need some, uh, the rib here is going to be some red holographic. Tie that on the side. The body calls for peacock curl, which I've been using a lot on all these flies. But I want to just show you here's some. Here's a substitute if you want to go that way. Uh, Arizona synthetic peacock. It's a really nice color. It's kind of a nice dark green. Uh, a little tip when you you're bringing some of this dubbing out of the the bag gets a little compacted and so forth. So I just have a little coffee bean grinder at the end of my tying desk and fluff it up. Makes it a lot easier to uh, to work with and just gives it a nice little mix again. I'll just throw a half hitch on there for my Norway's. And we get a nice tight dub on here. But it's, I like that uh, Arizona peacock, synthetic peacock. And that's in peacock color. Comes in different colorations. Nice and spiky. It's really, really nice. I like, I like what they've done with it. You seem to find your own products out there in your favor. So let's go with that. Now we're just going to uh, get a few turns in here. Four turns. Come to the front, tie that off. And then just reverse wrap the silver. It does take a little bit away from the red, but it, that's okay. It's got enough, enough light bouncing off that red. It looks pretty good. I like it like that. Uh, we've got the eye a little bit crowded. I'm going to come back to where the end of the head would be. Right there. And all we're going to do is put in a throat. And again, I just come off the side. This is lightly dressed. It's not a lot of... And I'll just tie that in on the side of my... Oh, I'll show you that again. I had to get my finger out of the way. I wanted to show you that, how I'm actually doing that. Pinch off another piece. Got nice square tips. 
just to show you, I'm just putting it on the side of the head to the length I want it. Cut that tips off, it's an easy time to do it. Then I'll come around the back of the, the head and just kind of roll it under. And it should roll under nice, coming off nice and square off the bottom. And we'll just finish our head. Get a whip finish on that. It's a suggestive little fly. There's no wing or nothing on it. it they say it could be taken for a lot of different uh, food sources, I guess. But it's very suggestive and it's very effective. Definitely going to get a bunch of these ready for myself. I, I don't fish this fly as much as some guys do. They just swear by it. I can see it. It's got a lot of really, really good characteristics. Not that I haven't fished it, but I haven't. You know, sometimes we get caught up in our own favorites and different things, and we forget to, we can't throw them all. We've got so many flies with us, we can't throw them all. But there it is, little devil, if you want to call it that. It's a dollback nymph. And there's another great English pattern for you. The grizzly king is one of Brent's favorites. It is a great producer on fish that may be not feeding aggressively on any particular hatch. It has the right ingredients to entice a strike when the bite is slow. We are using a Mustad 3399 size tin hook. Red hackle fibers for the tail. Gold mylar tinsel for the ribbing. Olive floss body material. For the wing is a rolled mallard flank. Okay, folks, the next fly on the bench is a grizzly king. Here's a fly that I've fished a fair amount. It's a great little producer. I'm tying it on a 3399 Mustad. And I ordered a, had them them ordered a thousand. They sent me gold hooks. <laughs> they let the I didn't know about that, but you know they're a pretty nice little hook and they they work good. So here I am fishing them. Got lots, I got a few left, quite a few of them already tied up. I might have three quarters of them tied. Let's come in here now with the uh, red tail. Then I'll bring in some of the uh, mylar here. This is size 16. Should have gold and silver. I want the gold facing when I wrap, so I'm going to tie the silver side up. That works good. And then we'll come in with some uh, olive uni floss. Single strand. You can go different shades of green, but I just stay with the olive. It's worked well, so I just keep it keep it simple. Nice thing about tying your own, you can trick them out whatever you're wanna go a little darker, go for it. Now I'm just going to uh wrap my body forward. A little bit of floss hanging out there, that's okay. Doesn't have to be perfect. A little bit of strands hanging out makes it even look better. Not hanging it on the wall. This one I fish, and I was actually went on the river one day with some guys on their own river and very qualified guys. I'm not going to name any names. They're good anglers. There, everybody was struggling. We had to heck of a time. Anyway, I tied a little grizzly king on there for some reason, and but that was the only that was the only fly that caught fish. So who knows? So just think out of the box a little bit. Sometimes you see some of these old patterns and. I just really encourage you to step out of the box a little bit. It's going to get some nice mylar wraps. The gold. It's a real neat little bug. And anytime you see a, a fly with a red tail, like these uh, English flies, that means most often than not, is that they're meant to fish in shallow water. Red is the most uh, easily seen color in shallow water. 
I'm going to put a little throat on there. Grizzly. I'm going to grab some of this more webby hackle there. Tie it on the side and I'll roll it under. There you go. Then we'll just uh, come in. Uh, you can use mallard for the wing. Or there's beside is a teal. So you can go with whatever works for you. Calls for the mallard. Let's go for that. And take a note that bottom we wouldn't want too much. We've got a nice feather going. they got a bit of a curvature to them. So what I do is I pull these, kind of roll them in my finger. I get that stem exposed. I can roll it back. And then I'll just get a soft turn, pull it straight up. If you pull it straight up, it remains on the top. Doesn't slide. Okay, and then you can just come in here now, get a nice little whip finish and a nice little head on that. This little fly here will get the job done for you. Don't underestimate it. It's a lot of fun to time. They're pretty looking little bugs, but they do do work. Matter of fact, I better check my fly box and see how many I got left. I might have to top it up. I'll definitely go to anything that's been working very well. Got puts a lot of fish in the basket for you. You want to make sure you're not short. Make sure you tie a few extra for your friends too, because they're going to be surprised when you're throwing a little English fly at them here, and you're catching fish. But don't don't think these trout have evolved too much over hundreds of years. There's a great little little fly right there, just below the surface. We'll fish that with a dry line. That that just rides right nice in there at a bit of an angle, like an emerging insect, like so, and uh, hang on. You got some caddis for a lot of times in the water. It's just a very great little attractor. So, thanks for watching this video. I uh, hope that helps some of you out. It's, uh, maybe some new adventures for you in fly tying and fishing. And and uh, we'll catch up to you real soon. Got any other ideas for videos? Please send them on in. We'll do what we can for you. Thanks to Brent for bringing us this informative demo. We hope this will video will encourage you to try some new flies for the season. Thanks for visiting us again on Sports Fishing on the Fly. We have hundreds of fly tying videos on our website or YouTube. Please check back often. There is always something new and exciting for the fly tire or fly anglers to learn. Please remember to conserve our waters.